Hey everybody, welcome to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob and this is the 44th episode in my 4th Agent Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy Series. I've got several comments to go through this uh, this episode. I, like I said, I was not able to publish an episode for uh, or make one for publication on Tuesday, so I have like a whole week's worth to go through here. But there's some good ones. I want to start with Tarsak. Uh, he mentioned that the Runestone of Cold Fury over here near these knights that are going, these knights and other units that are going after these blight elementals, blight units, he suggested that I pick this up on the way. Uh, that's a good idea. I think I was planning on doing that anyway, but I don't know if I mentioned it. So that'll give all of my units in that group a uh, strong will. It gives them killing momentum, uh, arctic walking, and I think there may be uh, some additional fire protection. Yep. Um, so yeah, then the, well, the knights have strong will anyway, but I'm pretty sure that would also give it to the Deathbringers. Yep. Um, as well as Devastating Charge, too. So, very good uh, upgrade for this battle, and since these knights don't really have much in terms of promotions, it might be helpful. Uh, he, oh, Tarsek also mentioned that I, I was talking about uh, summoning Earth Elementals as soon as possible. Uh, he is correct in reminding me that as soon as I get Great Mobilization cast, I probably need to reinforce that first. There is something else I might take a shortcut on and get and cast a different spell before doing that, but I'll get to that in a minute here. Um, column of chance near champions near the sorcerer tarsek mentioned i should go after that uh he's right there is one sitting out here i hadn't noticed yet because i hadn't quite gotten that far but he spotted that on the map there and that is definitely somewhere i want this army to go towards uh all of the units in here would benefit tremendously from getting uh experience upgrades particularly actually i think particularly the matriarchs uh the priest and obviously my new snake so i'm actually going to split that builder apart from that group and I have a few things that I kind of want to go after I don't know if I want to like try to level the snake here first I need to be mindful of what level he is and how much XP he has going into this battle out here I think I kind of want to cut up here and clear some of this stuff out while I have this army here since they're this army is kind of the one to do that um, the only other one powerful enough to clear structures like that right now is probably um, one of my other main armies, and I don't really have anyone else in this area. So I think I'm going to actually kind of start moving them in that direction. I'll get the snake some early XP from these battles, trying to be very careful not to lose him. Um, and the sorcerer can kind of just cast Chaos Rift and make things a bit easier. I'll get to that in a minute here. Um, let's see. Uh, for Tarsak also mentioned that casting Destabilized Mana Core is an option uh, for defending possibly these cities down here. Most of my units, well, not all of them, but some of them have uh, fire resistance. The tanks in particular, the juggernauts don't. I think he may have been actually referring to this city, but um, the Naga Matriarchs have fire protection, the flame tanks have fire immunity, so in a bad situation, the stabilized mana core may be something that I want to consider using. So far, it hasn't been necessary. Hopefully, it won't, um, but that is an option. Furt Fight mentioned that I should cast Seed of Destruct on... Seed of Distrust on the Merfolk Dwelling up in this area whenever I... Where was that at? I think it was... There it is, Hinlac right there. Um, as soon as I'm done killing Yellow, I need to get Seed of Distrust cast on that so no one else can make those stupid Lords of the Deep, which would be a big problem for me. I don't want to have to deal with those. Um, also... Uh, yeah, that that was that was it from Furt Fight, but that's an incredibly helpful comment. I do need to take advantage of Seed of Distrust, um, and I will try to remember that. You guys might have to remind me in a few episodes here, uh, once I've got purple or once I've got yellow on the ropes. Comment from Arch Redbeard regarding uh, my army here. I forgot to put the Warlord in with the King's Group when they went after the Column of Champions. There, I should really always prioritize getting levels from those columns of champions with heroes whenever possible so yeah that was a mistake on my part um i will try to remember that going forward archer beer also mentioned uh something about uh, producing items with more useful abilities and i just wanted to um mention because if i go down here and look at the city that's producing items i'm currently making this ring i can't see what that ring is doing but i was just going to say the problem that i i'm running into here in case any of el anyone else is wondering this is um, when I make a ring, I can make one with like two different types of elemental resistance, which is kind of what I'm going for. 
but uh, I'm left with only one upgrade point, and there's no option other than these crappy concealment spells. So yeah, I realize that another elemental resistance or first strike would be more useful, but I'm kind of stuck at this point if I want to put two elemental resistances on one of these items. But uh, yeah, the, the concealment is just unfortunately something that I... I mean, I may as well throw it on there, but it honestly probably won't do me any good. Made of Time uh, said that I should consider casting a Domain of Earth on my Naga City, and as he said that, I'm like, wait, I already have it, don't I? Well, no, I don't. That's Embrace Darkness circling around it. Domain of Earth definitely does need to go on this city. Um, I am going to continue terraforming and digging this wall out, putting some marshes in here because the Naga like that, but uh, definitely will be casting Domain of Earth, and that's something I'm going to do with my mana on the next turn once I'm done casting Great Mobilization. Um, he also said that casting mana fuel cells on this fairy might be, city might be helpful. I'll have to, um, well actually, you know what, I think it, regardless it would be useful because I've got a lot of upgrades to do on this fairy city, and it doesn't really have much in terms of production. The percentage of production that I would get with the extra 20 is almost a 50% boost, so I would say that is well worth it, especially considering my massive amount of mana income that needs to be spent on something. And, uh... Then last comment from Jeff, um, oh wait, I'm sorry, the comment uh, regarding destabilized mana core on, on uh, defense was one from Jeff. Tarsac's comment had to do with using Forge Blast to weaken enemy cities before attacking. Definitely an option. This army has not had any trouble uh, in terms of uh, taking cities, and casting points are kind of at a premium right now, so I probably won't use Forge Blast a whole lot unless I really feel the need to. But yes, it is worth remembering that that is an option. Okay, I do need to uh, try to get these units back in some semblance of order here and move along. I want to, uh, I want to get, well, first off, I want to figure out where they're going. Um, obviously going southeast, I think, yep. So I'm going to get my King's Army here and add a flame tank, at least one, to that group. The Warlord's Army, I think, was largely unchanged from what I had it set up to be in the first place. The King's Army I had made to be all about fire resistance. So, and I also want to make sure I'm putting damaged machines with him. So, probably the flame tank. I'll, I'll throw the... Well, that juggernaut could go with the... That juggernaut, I suppose, could go with... Call him the Lucky. This one's already repaired. So we'll let the king work on repairing that damaged flame tank there. Let Colm have this juggernaut so he can repair it. And then probably just throw the rest of these groups in their own army. Uh, yeah, and then everybody will just go down that way as far as they can. So... How far can they move exactly? Well, those guys can cover quite a bit of ground. More so than... Well, it's because of advanced logistics, honestly, but... Okay, so Colm's army can move just northeast of that tower, as can the kings. These units can also move northeast of the tower. Can anyone move onto the tower? The king's army cannot. Colm cannot. And they can't either. So, can Colm's army hit that spot? Can the king's army hit that spot? No. Alright, so based on what I'm seeing here, if no one can reach that spot, I'm going to have to stack them in a formation here, here, and here. Alright, let's see what we're up against. More of the same. The Tiger's not really throwing anything new at me. Hey, there's those items I dropped earlier. Uh, I don't have anyone that can quite run out there and grab them, so I'll play it safe and not do anything stupid. But yeah, put everyone on hold position there, and then um, I think with that that under control, more or less, I think I may as well just bring in some backup. Alright. Okay, Treslon offers a tribute. I'm going to take that gold. I have a whole ton now. And keep producing buildings with it as fast as I can. More infrastructure upgrades, trying to get those grand palaces. Uh, I've got a new item for her and wasn't really paying attention to it. Yeah, that's a bit more useful. Having Holy Champion plus one resistance, I'd rather have that than the Blight Protection. Um, especially going up against the 
Warlord, I can expect some fire damage from. I have the Quiver of Frostbite on the range to her, on the way to her too. I'm not sure if that was intentional or whether I wanted her to keep that shield. She is a high, okay, she's a high elf, so she's got, and she has a longbow, so maybe I was thinking about giving her some more ranged options. I'll think about that a bit more as it gets closer. Okay, um, I think I had just entered a new turn here, so, and these units can, they can hit the water on this turn. None of them can go as far as I would like, but as long as they can disembark and at least move one space, I should be okay. So I'm going to send the spy drone up to grab that tower to make sure the coast is clear for these guys. Um, well... Not really. Those mana core riders could rush down in a single turn and attack anything, but there's only three of them, and they would be attacking at most two full armies. They can't get the war breeds in, and as far as I can tell, they don't have anything else. Plus, I have this earth elemental here now who can help out. Um, I'm going to drop somebody from this group. Who is going to get dropped? Probably, well... Maybe that Wraith King. He's... What does he get at gold rank? He's kind of close to gold rank. He gets Throw Curse. I think I'd really rather have... Because I need these guys for healing. I want to keep the Ice Queen around because, you know, extra cold damage might come in handy, especially against Draconians. What kind of Mana Core Riders are these? That's a Draconian. These are all Draconians. And those are definitely Draconian War Breeds. It's kind of difficult at this point in the game to decide who to let go of, but I think it's going to be that, uh, that Lich. Actually, what I could do with it, at least temporarily, is position it here. It won't be a problem for anything. And I can throw the Firstborn in with the Necromancer, and that's... <laughs> these. Okay, these guys are Firstborns too now. Everyone's a Firstborn. Um... And probably just do that. I think I'll be okay here. Oh, plus they've got the special embarked unit. So I can actually get them... So they will all be able to disembark on the next turn. Very, very good. With plenty of room to spare. I'm gonna back him off. I got a feeling he's gonna actually get... I got a feeling he's gonna get picked off by those Manacore Riders. I'm gonna leave him there on the tower. Um, I think he's gonna get picked off anyway, so... Well, I guess there's no reason to. And that would draw the war breeds down here too. I think I'll just put him on the... I'll just bring him this way to maybe try to lure the Manacore Riders further away from these armies if they decide to go after it. Um, unless computer's smart enough to go right through it. I don't know that their movement... I don't know how smart they'll be with their movement. Dwarf Metropolis here. Where is that? Oh, this is Bullstone, so... I believe I may have just gotten a Grand Palace in this city, if I am not mistaken. Yep. Bullstone has a Grand Palace. Uh, doesn't really need anything else. Way back here, I probably don't need walls. I guess I'll build an Arcane Item Forge here, since I've kind of needed a lot of items lately. Maybe that'd be useful to have. And... Why not? Maybe, actually, that city doesn't have very good production. That might not be a very good candidate for an arcane item forge, now that I think of it. How much does that... I mean, it costs... costs 250 to just build the thing. 173 production is what this city is currently getting. Oh, I guess it does have that dungeon in its borders now, so yeah, that's okay, I guess. The city doesn't really have a whole lot of other useful things to do, so... Okay, leave the wraith there. Uh, the flyer is still on scouting duty. Okay, that's my dragon city. I believe my, uh, I had a lost soul in this area. Did that get picked off? I don't remember. Oh no, there it is. Oh yeah, he's going after that money. Yeah, money. 
I'll take that. Oh, and more money. And grab that before the computer swipe it up. Just fill in that last little bit there and then double back down the other way. And let the flyer do most of the explora exploration over here. Okay, he's got just enough to get that, so I may as well. We've got another Tigran City out here. I want to at least get that on the map. Torungrath or something like that. Ultimately, that city may not matter much, depending on where their leader is. We'll see. I'm hoping they try to defend their capital with their leader. If it would be stupid enough to do that, that would be quite helpful. What do I have over here? Um, I wonder if that's worth it. Why is that city so dang expensive? 910 gold for a vassal? I want to see what they've got before I make that kind of a purchase. Trade income per turn is 42 gold, 14 minutes. I just don't think that's worth the money. That's a lot of money. I'm sure I could spend it on other things, and that city might get captured the second I... I do. It might almost be better to cast Seed of Distrust on it. Or let the computers just waste their money. If Yellow buys it, it might be a waste, because really need to be spending their money on defense right now. Alright, you guys should probably head down here. I believe they're going after that. Yeah, these knights are kind of waiting for a little backup. I think they're just sort of healing right now, so I'm not going to do much with those units on this turn. I can sail these boats up here and get a little better view. Oh, there's a bunch of undead there. Oh yeah, and I do have my other group of boats sailing forward now as well, which is very good news. Oh wait, I think I doubled them back because I wanted to make one more ironclad just to keep everyone's movement kind of the same. This guy is going to go exploring up here, and hopefully not dying. I'm actually going to have him run down that tunnel, I think. Yep. Alright, what to do with all these units? Well, they should probably kind of hang out over by my sorcerer for now, in case he needs a hand with anything for edge units show up. On the other hand, they may need to be guarding the fairy city or that northern route. You know, I think what I'm going to do with these units is leave them kind of like position some here, position some here. They don't have any repair units, which kind of sucks. I need builders. I have that one. I guess he is going back that way. Oh, but he needs to go. You know, I really need just more repair stuff, I think. I'm going to cancel merchandise here for a, turn, for a turn and make one builder. There he is. Because I just need more options for repairing the machines when I don't have a hero around to do it for them. And then, yeah, I guess this guy, will, he needs to come up in this direction. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do this battle now. Man, they're one turn away from being able to use those haste berries. I guess I could use them on the next turn because I could go there, then move up and get this, and then move back and get the haste berries. That that'll work. All right, closely matched. Well, it won't be closely matched when I cast... Wait a second. Always have to get in the habit of making sure, because I've made this mistake a few times this series. He does have 70 casting points, so I am good to go. 
I'm gonna be casting Chaos Rift and give myself make this a, a fair fight. And let's begin right away with that. And we'll get that thunderstorm going in a second here. In the meantime, prepare to get rushed by a bunch of stuff. Can anyone else buff or bestow iron? I, I don't really want to use bestow iron heart yet. I think the Naga could curse. Uh, we'll wait until the Manicore Riders get a bit closer and the Sorcerer can move up with everybody else. Okay, a couple of them are coming right at me. That's interesting. Okay, well we got a frost elemental, so that will hopefully be a little bit of a distraction. The Manacle Riders will tear that thing apart though, because of its physical weakness. I don't like that. Um, really any of these units will actually tear it apart, so basically you need to go be a distraction. Just go sit right there. Okay. King can only move one space before casting Thunderstorm. And I want to get somebody who can handle a couple hits from those knights up or from those manacle riders up front. Which would be him. The Naga can try to curse somebody. Okay, that works. I'm surprised that worked. They're gonna they're both going to defensive strike too, which is kind of annoying, so I may as well not let both of them hit that knight. I just need them to get close. And how about you? Okay, that slows him down a little bit. I'll just leave my units where they're currently at and see what happens. Okay, that Berserker just got nuked. <laughs> awesome. Okay, good. Now they're getting a little distracted. Wanted them to start going after other stuff. Nice! Got a freeze on him. Awesome. That's a free shot, basically. Don't even have to worry about that other one running back at me. Okay, and I want to try to get that snake up there to where you can be useful and get some XP. Just need to be extremely careful with him. I don't want him to die. Um, on that note, well, the sorcerer's out of casting points, so oh yeah, he could touch by use touch by faith on somebody. How about uh, you now? Let's just use it. Get it out there. Give it to the naga. Oh, crap. I keep forgetting that... Oh, I may have gotten a little lucky there. I keep forgetting if they hit and get frozen on their turn, they will unfreeze on the very next turn. I was also thinking the frozen effect lasts for two turns, but I don't think the frozen effect from Inflict Frozen lasts for two turns. I guess that might be a little bit OP if it did. That would have been uh, tremendously terrible if he got killed. Yikes, that, that was actually a really huge mistake, and I, I'm glad I didn't pay for it. Because if there were more mana cores close by, they all ganged up on him, that could have been a really bad day for that sorcerer. Alright, well, stop thinking about that and move forward here. I want to try to... I could try to cause fear. I wouldn't mind leaving that thing shaken. Is that a ranged ability? I don't even think I need to move. No, that's not a ranged ability. <laughs> I was thinking you had to get right up in their face for that to work. Alright, first things first. I am not going to be attacking with... Why didn't he defensive strike? 
Unless he wanted to get two hits in on me. I'm not going to be attacking with that snake here. Because the other Manicore Rider would just kill it. I think the safe solution... First, let's see how much damage the Freeze could do to that thing. They could probably kill it. Alright. What I'm going to do is go ahead and let the priests kill that thing off. Or not quite kill it off, apparently. I want you to sit here. I want you to sit here. I kind of want to attack it with the knight. You know, that other manacle rider is so far away, it doesn't matter, so I'll be okay to do that. If I could let the snake get a kill on one of those manacle riders somehow, that would be just absolutely great. I want the sorcerer to get away from all that. I don't even want to take a chance with him. I'll move the snake up. here in case they one shot that frost elemental which I don't think the berserker can actually do yeah the snake should be okay here is there any other useful abilities that he's got not that I'm seeing All right. I'm just gonna have him defend and I'll probably heal him with the priest on the next turn. Nice. Okay, I think I can... Uh, I should be able to set this up to where the snake gets that kill. I'm, I might be able to set it up to where the snake gets both kills. If I'm really careful in how I do this. I'm going to have to let somebody else eat up some of its movement. But that last one is so weak. Well, I'm not going to take any unnecessary risks. First thing I want to do is make a path for that snake. Let's start by doing this and getting these guys out of the way so they can go back and iron heart that guy. Can he take a hit? Okay, he can take one. He probably won't kill it. He did kill it. Okay, well then I just need to let the other one come in and It'll probably kill... It'll probably kill that Frost Elemental. And then I'll let the Snake finish that one off. In fact, I'm going to try to make sure that it kills the Frost Elemental. Okay. Yeah, so it can't reach the Snake now, which means I can move the Snake up a bit closer. And I don't want to throw another curse because I don't want to slow it down anymore. I need it to run to that position on the next turn. And just leave me back here where it's safe. Like everybody else is fine where they're at. Oh, Frost Aura. Okay. Right. It's such low health that he just suicided himself. Okay, well the snake got zero XP from that battle, unfortunately. There's some decent units there. Worth 400 gold. You know, the fact that the Goblin Big Beetle has tunneling might alone make it worth it. I think I'm going to take those units. So decent units, at least. Maybe you could let me start forming another defensive barrier. I want to take a group of probably fairies and go scouting with them, like a big group of fairies, so they can defend themselves against anything except, like, really big armies. 
This was a comment suggested to me a couple episodes ago, and uh, I apologize, I don't remember whose idea it was, but I think it may have been Jeff. But anyway, I'm going to send them out on their own little scouting mission, and they could probably clear a couple little things here and there. Uh, as for you guys, may as well let you participate here. Alright, who wants to start this fight? How about the big beetle? It's got all that movement. Wait a second. Fort attack. That's an item rack. I want the sorcerer moving onto it. Okay, let's actually try to get some XP for the snake this time. Fortunately, the units here are a little bit less scary. I do need to watch out for the sun disk from those man er, from the sphinxes though. Start off by so for this one I'm gonna start off by just casting that thunderstorm. Actually I can't cast Chaos Rift anyway, but I don't really need it here. Um, I could try to convert these units, but I don't really need or want them even. Um, I guess I guess it doesn't ever hurt to have them, especially since I have some extra money. And if nothing else it'd give me some throwaway scouts, so I guess I'll give it a try. Curse them first. And make sure I patch up the sorcerer properly. Now those guys, in case I don't charm them, I want the snakes there. Oh right, yeah, units over there. Okay, I don't. Well, we'll see. We'll see what we can do up here. Okay, so we got two options, two chances to charm him. I did get him. We'll see if I can even keep him alive. Um, again, snake can't really hit anything. I think I want to. Well, I wouldn't mind if these guys leveled up. How close are they? 100 out of 110. Pretty darn close. I want to stun that. Okay, I'm going to stun that unit. Let the snake kill it. Um, all these other units are just in the way right now. I'm going to kill at least one of these things to be on the safe side. You can waste an action point hitting the knight, because I don't want it throwing a bunch of discs at the snake, hurting it, or blades. Matter of fact, I think I'm just going to charge it with the knight. Or sit on defense right there. Yeah, charging will use up another action point, and I could use the lifesteal. And then I can move the snakes up as far as here. So they can get plenty of hits in on that sphinx on the next turn. As far as these guys go, I guess I just need to kill them. I could run away. That would eat up some of his movement and buy me some time to get more XP for the snake. I'm gonna... I'm gonna kill at least one of them. I think. Hopefully they don't all die before they have a chance to do anything. Uh, he's gonna get fried by light. Uh, well, sometimes you just get fried by lightning. Don't kill it, don't kill it, good gosh. I want this guy to get some XP, geez. Okay, he got one rank from that hit alone, I think.
Um, I don't think it really matters what I do. I may as well... Oh, crap. I didn't think it would do that much damage to the big beetle. I didn't even notice it killed it. I just assumed the beetle would be fine. Did it crit? Did I not notice something here? Or does he just have... Wow, that big beetle was a lot more fragile than I thought. Well, that's kind of embarrassing. I didn't even notice he had died. Um, well, since the lightning's going to kill him on the next turn anyway, I may as well... Both those Naga already threw Curse, so I can't use that. I could use... Slip away a couple times. Nobody else can do anything, so... I'm going to just give the XP to the, those guys, I guess. That's kind of disappointing. The big beetle was the one I was excited about getting there, and now he's gone. Got a tiger to make up for it. None of these items look particularly appealing, so I'm just going to sell those. Alright, you go back with your army. You uh, stay there for now, I guess. I guess you can go here. I want that builder to come up with these units, because there's some towers I need to build up here. Alright, and then the rest of you can wait. Actually, I'll probably have... Make up for the fairies that left those armies. I'll send that guy over. Okay, I can go to the next turn here. I did get a Summer of Love event. A big population boost here. That's pretty nice, I guess. Alright, I'm good to go for the next turn. Um... I'm going to zoom out probably over here and get a sense for what the Tigrans are up to. No movement yet. yet. I'm half expecting them to pull in some reinforcements. Also, no heroes. I haven't... I don't see any heroes here. That kind of surprises me. They must be out doing heroic things somewhere, I guess. Okay, Valerie's moving, and then Red will be next. And Red is just a little bit concerning because I don't know what he's going to do with regard to all these embarked units. I got a feeling he'll at least snipe that spy drone. But it was worth it for the intel. No, it looks like they're falling back. The main invasion at Lunaris. Oh right, I forgot about that guy moving over there, but this army, I think I calculated it out and they should be able to catch up. Alright, before I forget about that, I'm definitely going to kill that thing. Let's clear a path with the Juggernaut first. Sorry, elves, but your forest is forfeit. Alright, just enough movement to catch up with this dang thing. I'm going to go into this with full casting points. I'm not going to cast Great Mobilization yet, just in case he tries to do something fancy. I may as well get that devastating charge bonus here and use up some of this thing's movement. So I'm going to start with a... Actually, I'm not going to start with a broadside. I'm just going to start with a devastating charge. Oh gosh, those knights are showing that guy who's boss. Jeez. He, he has no movement left. Well, free hits. Eh, more free hits. Oh, well, that's one less mana core rider to deal with. Oh, the 
Knight doesn't even have enough movement to move back. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get these guys off of the water. I'll feel a lot better. Want to make sure I get them as moved along as far as possible. That army can make it west of that mountain, as can that one. That one can make it a little bit further. All right, let's make sure that remains the case. All right. So, let the battle begin. That is Red's capital right there. Actually might end up getting their capital and the Tigran capital at exactly the same time. Wait, is that the Tigrans? No, I'm actually going to get to Red's first. I kind of thought it would take me longer to get there, but that little water route kind of worked out. I'm going to send this Wraith back to help over here. I don't want to split that army up and give them a chance to attack a smaller stack and draw less units into a battle. Oh, hello. Who are you? You're not Red's leader, so I guess I don't care that much. They might... That spy drone's still probably going to die. I should have kept it over the water, now that I think of it. He's got more cities back there. Alright, well get this done. What are my odds of success here? With that runestone of cold fury, yeah, I'll be fine. Once the goblin borders expand, having that blight structure will be really nice. That was something our Shredbeard was talking about in the comments. Was I was kind of zoned in on the casting points, which are great, but having um, having your units, you know, like the uh, like the blight terrain or blight climate is exceptionally helpful. That's, um, it's a very rare thing to have units that like Blight Climate, because it's just, it's um, almost every race hates it, or dislikes it. Goblins are the only exception. Well, I have four knights here. I kind of feel like devastating charging everything is the way to go. They do have that pesky Shadow Stalker in the back, but I should be okay. Let's do this. Move you up. Okay, cool. Critical hit makes things a little safer. Alright, and killing momentum. Forgot about that. Excellent. is the way to do it, I suppose. Kind of want to guard that that knight's flank from the spider. I think the best way to do that would be to put the shadow stalker right not shadow stalker, the deathbringer right here. So at least the spider can't flank it. Ouch. Yeah, Shadow Stalkers suck. They do a lot of damage. Okay, that knight is very much in need of some healing. He's also severely poisoned. Four. Okay, yeah, and he might be weakened too, which might actually... That, I wonder if the weakened effect increases the amount of damage he takes from being severely poisoned. I actually don't really know that. I'm gonna get him out of here one way or another anyway, so... Let's, uh... Focus on turning that Shadow Stalker around first. Go 
One, two, three, four. Stab you in the back. You just get out of here. I can heat up all that thing's movement. Oh, I ghoul cursed it. Hey, nice. I wasn't really even thinking about that, but I wonder if you can ghoul curse those guys. That would be pretty cool. I, I don't think you can, though. I don't think they can be ghouled. Because they're an elemental. Alright, who's going to go after that thing? No matter who it is, the knights just aren't going to do much damage to it. I'm going to move this guy up. He can do at least halfway decent damage. And I need to actually use up... Okay, so I am going to intentionally turn that thing around. Because I want the knights to use up some of its movement. So it can't just gang up. They can't all e so easily gang up on one unit. And try to distract this thing a little bit with the wraith. Get off of me. You can finish that thing off. Alright. Don't think there's anything they can heal. Oh, wait, they can heal the Deathbringer, right? Can't heal that knight, unfortunately. Alright, that's everything. Knight barely survives. And I think he just hit gold rank. Yep. That's a pretty nice undead unit. Didn't quite make the cut for my main armies, but it's still a good unit nonetheless. Alright, I'm gonna get these guys out of here. Actually, they're gonna sit here with the spider for a turn. The spider and the wraith, just to keep them in that little formation there, in case there's anything sneaking around that I don't see. Alright, I got a orb for this guy with extra... Only got 60 for him. Fire protection. I'm going to swap that out for the extra resistance in general. That's plus two resistance. That's pretty good for a warlord. I might put that ring up back on if I if I remember to, um, if I think about it going forward. Let's see, what else arrived? Oh, my king got his big shield. Wait, did he? Okay, off to something else, I guess. Oh yeah, I kind of was giving this to her for extra... Yeah, I wanted frost damage on her range attacks. Extra frost damage to mess around with those Draconians a bit. So I will put that on. Why did the king... I thought it said the king's shield arrived, but it's not acting like it did. Oh wait, there it is. The ward's bulwark device. That gives him defender. But... I was sending him that shield instead. So I was going to have him keep the Tunic of the Young Adventure. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make him immune to shock damage. So, yeah, this item is going to need to actually go to the Warlord. We can figure out how to switch that here. You know what? I'm going to need to do this battle here in a second anyway. So what I'm going to do is move the king up and drop this shield. That's a very good shield. And as soon as that shield gets there, and he'll have tireless, I'll have a useless coat of the elephant hunter for selling. It'll be great. Right, leave that there, then let the warlord army come by and pick it up. Because he could definitely use that. And then this shield, 
That's a good shield too. The physical protection on it's really nice. I'm not sure who could use that, but I'm sure somebody could. And then I want him to have... No, he gets Defender from that shield. That's right. So I'll leave him with that extra resistance item for now. And I'm wondering if anyone else could use that physical protection shield. It would be better than what he's carrying, probably. Everybody else has got quivers. I'll give it to the Theocrat. I guess he could use it more than anybody else could. And then that Defender thing might also be a good candidate for going to the Theocrat. Maybe I could do something cool, like turn him into a really tanky unit, then give him Absorb Pain or something like that. He actually also just needs Torso Gear. He doesn't have any. So yeah, he's, he's definitely a good candidate for this as well. Except that he is full of items. Alright, well something's got to get sold, I think. Huh, I don't want to sell any of those things. Because that's giving him razor projectiles. Does the druid have razor projectiles? He might be a better... He might be a better use for that anyway. No, he doesn't. No, I'm sorry, not the druid, the sorcerer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is send that razor projectile bow to the sorcerer, since my intention here is to turn the theocrat into a little bit more of a melee guy. And then I can move over to the king, not the king, the warlord. And I can send this to the theocrat, and go back to the theocrat, and give him... Link's tunic. Because we all know that's Link's tunic. Okay. That's good for now. Alright, back back to what we were doing here. Um, it is getting kind of close to the end of this episode. I don't know if I should do this battle now or... Oh wait, what is this item here? I forgot I had dropped some stuff. Oh yeah, this stuff I was just going to sell, I think. Don't need any of that. You know what? I'm just going to do this battle now. I don't want to make everybody wait. Besides, I've got a lot of siege. Shouldn't be too bad. Closely matched, huh? All right. Well, I've already used, moved my armies out of formation, and when I reload, I don't want the computers jumping me, so I kind of have to do this, I guess. Okay, Relentless Army is not cool. I don't like that. I'm going to probably try to dispel that. I hate that spell. Ooh, critical success. All right, I lucked out. Oh, I should have cast Great Mobilization before this battle. That would have been useful. Oh, you know what? That's okay. We're gonna just move up here a little bit and try to get this battle done quickly. Still don't want to lose anybody, but um, let's do this. Rapid reload on you. You can just start... Whoops, I don't want you on defense. I want you to start unloading on the front gate there. I want you to have Guarded by Flames right now. And everybody else can just kind of move up. This guy should be ready for a pretty good fight, so I'll let him kind of take the lead there a little bit. Alright, good. That's what I wanted. That's not really what I want. He's taking some damage. 
Oh, they are tigrants too. They could pounce. Ooh. They might have been able to kill him if they both pounced. I misunderestimated. Yeah, because his fire resistance item has gone. I misunderestimated just how much damage those guys would do. I'm kind of surprised they didn't just pounce. Maybe he actually did have enough... I guess with 28 defense he might have been okay. He probably would have been okay unless they high rolled. Still, that's not a chance I want to take on a regular basis. I think that's twice this episode I've kind of lucked out. All right, I want to I want to patch him up big time. Not exactly useful to have the warlord tanking that kind of damage. Elemental damage. Alright, you guys I think will be okay. Take a hit from that guy and then just sit on defense. That slows him down a little bit. Okay, so these guys were all kind enough to bunch up. I'm gonna use that to my advantage here. Oh my gosh. More coming down this way too. I wonder if the group of flame tanks could handle that on their own. Well, I do want this cannon to shoot here, because it can hit three units pretty dang hard. Um, the, all three flame tanks I'm going to have go down here and torch these guys. There we go. Have to find that right angle. I might need more backup over there. Got anybody else with a range attack that can help out? I want to kill at least one of those war breeds. Okay, the fairies will do the trick. Not a whole lot I can do about that Manticore Rider pouncing something, but by itself, I should be okay. I'm also going to take this guy out. I did not take that guy out. That knight is in danger now. Why am I not able to... Oh, wait, I'm not able to cast spells because my hero has already moved, but the Warlord is still good to cast spells if he wants. I'm going to move him back here and do just that. Uh, no, not last stand. The knight's not on defense. That doesn't help me. I want Berserk. Oh, no, no. My gosh. Wrong button. Berserk or Shout of Intimidation? Uh, that's a nine. Both of them are nine checks. I kind of expected him to resist that, but... Oh, that doesn't really help me out much at all, actually. It lowered his movement a bit, but it didn't actually lower his a action points. Man, I wish I had just left that cannon down there with them. Because that Manticore Rider could do a sizable amount of damage to that knight, especially combined with that Phalanx. Oh, I could maybe throw, throw a flashbang. That might be just enough. Oh wait, that war breed. Well, that war breed is gonna die anyway. All right. Well, let's let's try to. I don't think there's a whole lot else except for maybe maybe that engineer being able to help out. But I don't think there's a whole lot else that they can do. I I, I don't think the engineer will do anything substantial to help out down there. That knight might just die anyway. I'll replace it with something. Um, 
I don't think there's any other way to save it. I'm gonna just use the engineer to rapid reload on this thing so I can deal some serious damage to that group of units right there. Might need the knight to use up this guy's movement, movement right there. Cause I want these juggernauts all targeted on that group. Having trouble getting everybody in the line of fire here. There we go. Kind of want to use up another one of this thing's movement points. I think I'm going to. So he's not hitting my machines in the back. Oh, he can't move at all now. Okay, excellent. The machines should be fine. That flame tank can't hit those guys, but he can hit these guys. Won't hurt my firstborns. Thinking, thinking I've got that phalanx and the knight left. Yep, that's it. So, I don't really want to risk losing that phalanx. I think I'm going to use it to kill that manicore rider. Or to attack it. I don't know, I'll take a lot of damage in retaliation if I do that. So I'm a little nervous. I think I'll just let it sit there. I'm going to lose some stuff in this battle. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I guess if I'm more aggressive though, I can kind of control what I lose. I'd rather lose the knight than that phalanx. So, on that note, I'm going to move him up here. Put him on defense. Alternatively, they might just go after the machines, because... Yeah, do that. Okay, they're going to be dumb. They'll waste all their time going after those machines. They killed one cannon. I think they could have done a lot more than that. Good gosh, people. They're just obsessed with going after those machines. Okay, well this is a little bit of a mess, but I'm pretty sure in all of that I only lost one unit. This battle could have been fought much better, I think. Kind of shouldn't have maybe gone right up the middle. You're out of movement, but you're not. Okay, there's a knight, or a phalanx on that unit I need to get rid of. Wait, this might be a fine time to do this. Yeah, that's a perfect time for a broadside. May want to reload that tank again. Put another mortar shot right behind all those guys. Alright, that is what I'm going to do. Reload. Probably fire a shot off right here. Mostly because these guys can kill that manacore rider easily. They also have guarded by flames, so I don't really need to worry so much about doing this. I think it'll do me more good than harm. Nice critical. All 
Alright, that Phalanx has 7 health left. The Ram should kill it. I'm going to do that. And I kind of want my King to go just pick a fight with that Phalanx. Or that Phalanx. I need somebody to pick a fight with that Phalanx. Oh, that's a Sun Guard. Yeah, I don't need to worry about that so much. Yeah, the Knight will be fine. I'm going to use the King to just get in this thing's face a little bit. Now, don't critical hit me, you little jerk. He'll be okay. He's got too much defense. Alright, so back down here. I need to kill that Manicore Rider. I can probably do that with the Warlord. Who has pounce? Didn't quite get it, but it'll burn out on the next turn, so I don't need to do anything else. I want to soften that guy up a little more so he can't move. Alright, it should be good there. That knight needs to get out of the way of all these flame tanks. I can do this with no trouble. Actually, the fairies can hit that phalanx for a bit of damage. The knight, can that get all the way around? Okay, so I'm gonna have the knight attack the cheetah. Have this thing go around and ram. Phalanx. And I think the other Phalanx and the Sun Guard are the only two things left. Well, and the Manticore Rider that's going to die on the next turn. But why I let it die when I could just get XP for that tank? Oh, they still got units on the walls. Okay, I think everyone is okay. I'm gonna get some of the weaker units out of here. Some of these units need healing too. Uh, Engineer's gonna have its work cut out for him. Engineer and heroes. Let's start by killing that phalanx. Very get a level. Um, I want to back this guy up and we'll heal him with that hero. The knights just need health. Which I think somebody here has. Colm might have a healing item. Yeah, he does. The knights need to get back towards him. Oh, wait, we still got one more phalanx here. Causing trouble. Okay, well, you do this again. You do what you do best. Blow that guy into little pieces. There, now that problem solved. Okay, gotta kinda get everybody sorta back together here and figure out who needs what. King is a little beat up too. I'm going to start with uh, repair, emergency repair on that juggernaut. And I already rapid reloaded there. And we'll just take this opportunity to repair a little bit before Finishing that archer off. Oh, he's just going to make this really hard on himself. Okay. Well, I think that's okay. I I believe my king may also have healing. Yes, he does. I have him use that on himself. Who else needs some patching up? Uh, my engineer can heal this. Or my... 
And I think somebody else has a repair machine. Colm does, but I, did he already use it? He used it. And I already used it with the Jarnot. So I've done all the repair machine I can do for this battle. Colm has healing. That's what I was going to do. And I'm going to actually give that to the Phalanx. I think most of my other units are pretty much used up on their abilities, so I'm just going to kill that. Yeah, I'm just going to kill that archer now. Oh, the fairies are going to tear that apart. Jeez. That frost damage. The Tigrans do not care for that one bit. Okay, so one more city down. No heroes, so, well, on the bright side, no items to mess around with. Um, and I'll follow that road east on the next episode and just continue cruising along. For now, I think I'll park everybody. Actually, there's no reason to park everybody there. I, I can get quite a bit more distance here. I just keep the ball rolling. Yeah, I did just lose that one cannon there, so that's kind of unfortunate. But I have backup equipment that I can send over there. And then I might leave the rest of that army uh, to defend or something. So I'm going to actually... What I'll do... Yeah, this will be good as new. I'll give the, that juggernaut help it, have it catch up here. And there we go. Cannon replaced. And they can move up to that point. I believe I can get somebody there. I can get someone there. Okay. So I can get as far as this. And then in the meantime, I think I'm going to send the rest of this group towards the most vulnerable city I have in this area, which is probably this one. And they can kind of watch this northern flank or send in reinforcements as necessary. And then I can go after the Tigran's capital and hopefully finish them off here pretty soon. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cast Great Mobilization now uh, so I don't forget to on the next turn for some reason. Which I actually probably should have done before moving all those units. But uh, on the next turn, they should be able to move pretty darn far. So I'll be able to make up some of that lost ground. I need a repair guy in that group. Yeah, I'm going to swap something here. Uh, just so I don't forget. I'll put the flame tank. It'll have enough movement. Put the flame tank here. Move that engineer back one space. That way, each each army has somebody doing some repairs every every round. I need a lot right now. Those machines got the got got beat up pretty bad in that last battle. Okay, um, and I cast Great Mobilization. I'm going to cast Embrace Darkness because these are all things I don't want to forget to do before the end of this episode. So we're just going to get an extra long one today. Not Embrace Darkness. Cast Domain of Earth on the Naga City down here. Oh wait, oh, I tried to do this earlier, that's right. It doesn't work. You can't cast Domain of Earth on Naga Cities. Or I think it probably is like general for uh, these, uh, what are they called? Like lesser races? I don't know. I don't know what you'd call them. I'm going to cancel this. Dwellings, that's the word I'm looking for. I don't think it can be cast on dwellings at all. So with that being said, I'm going to reinforce... Wait a second... I might need those casting points for... No. I shouldn't. Yeah, because I'll get them back when the enemy starts their move. I'll have to remember, because it's really unwise to use them if you think you might need them throughout the course of your turn. So if I'm going to reinforce that spell, I should do it with whatever I have remaining at the end of the turn after doing everything else. And there's still quite a few things to do. So I'm going to hold off on finishing that off and I'll try to remember to to reinforce that at the next episode. I've been pretty good lately about remembering to use mana at the end of turns, so I don't think that'll be a problem. All right, well, this episode has gone on for a bit longer than I expected, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and save it here, uh, wrap this one up. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next episode.